Wi-Fi Zero. <laughs> Back in the mid-90s, Wi-Fi was basically a messy science project. They called it IEEE 802.11, which sounds like a printer error more than a technology. Speeds? Around 2 megabits per second. Whew, that's slower than most text messages today. But this was the seed, the moment we stopped tripping over Ethernet cables and started believing wireless internet could actually exist. Wi-Fi 1 Welcome to Wi-Fi 1, officially born in 1999. People were still using chunky laptops and flip phones with antennas. Connecting to Wi-Fi felt like discovering magic. The speed? Around 11 megabits per second. Enough to load a website. Eventually, it used the 2.4 gigahertz band, which famously fought with your microwave every time you reheated leftovers. Still, Wi-Fi 1 was the spark. Homes and offices finally began cutting the cords. Wi-Fi 2. Wi-Fi 2, around 2003, was like the awkward teenager of the internet. Faster? Sure. Stable? Kind of. Speeds hit 54 megabits per second, and this time we got dual bands. 2.4 and 5 gigahertz, meaning fewer fights with your microwave and more with your router. Passwords started showing up too, even if they were just 1234 or password. Wi-Fi was growing up and so were we. Wi-Fi 3. Then came Wi-Fi 3, the one that actually made YouTube usable. It reached 600 megabits per second, thanks to something called MIMO antennas. Basically, multiple antennas working together so your video doesn't freeze mid-sentence. Finally, no more buffering circles doing laps on your screen. Wi-Fi 4. Now we hit the big one. Wi-Fi 4, the real modern start. Released in 2009, it powered early smartphones, laptops, even smart TVs. Speeds jumped to 300 to 600 megabits per second, making Netflix marathons possible without begging the router for mercy. It gave us the comfort of knowing Wi-Fi had finally grown up. Wi-Fi 5 Wi-Fi 5, or 802.11 AC, showed up in 2013, and it looked serious. Those alien-looking routers with 10 antennas? Yeah, that era. Speeds shot into the gigabit range, and Wi-Fi finally learned how to aim signals properly. That's called beamforming. In short, Wi-Fi 5 made gaming smoother, streaming faster, and routers uglier. Wi-Fi 6. Then came Wi-Fi 6, the clever one. Instead of bragging about speed, it bragged about efficiency. It handles crowded homes better, perfect for families with 15 gadgets fighting for bandwidth. It brought new tech like OFDMA and MUMIMO, which basically means everyone gets smoother internet at the same time. Finally, Zoom calls that don't freeze you mid-blink. Wi-Fi 6E Then came the secret sibling, Wi-Fi 6E. It added the 6 GHz band, like opening a fresh highway when the old ones jammed. It's cleaner, faster, less crowded. Perfect for high-end users who want zero lag. Think of it as Wi-Fi 6 with a VIP pass. Wi-Fi 7. And now, Wi-Fi 7. The next big leap. We're talking speeds up to 46 gigabits per second. Insane, right? It uses multi-link operation, letting your device talk on several frequencies at once. This is built for AR, VR, 8K, and even futuristic smart homes. Basically, the internet where even your toaster might get firmware updates. Every Wi-Fi generation made life faster, smoother, and honestly, made us more impatient. We used to wait minutes for a web page. Now we panic if a YouTube ad doesn't skip in five seconds. So, next time your Wi-Fi lags, remember, that signal just traveled through walls, air, and maybe even your neighbor's cat, just to load that meme. Not bad for invisible waves, right? If you learned something today, subscribe to Shaw Explainer. Because before Wi-Fi 8 drops, we're decoding the internet.